Buenos dias. Hello. Mbola vinaka. Malo elele. Welcome to worship with the Centennial United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Renee Ekstrom Fernandez. Happy New Year. I always like to remind us that we begin our Christian year with this first Sunday in Advent. This Advent, we all need comfort, challenge, and good news. Today, the prophet Isaiah offers all three. We have a few announcements. While worship in our sanctuary is suspended, we will continue to make online worship available on our website at cumcsac.org. Our Fijian language worship has returned to Facebook Live Sundays at 1 o'clock. We will not be able to continue gathering outside homes for that service. So please contact our Vakatawa Iferaimi Tawake to connect on Facebook. An Advent calendar is a wonderful way to teach children to wait for more than presents under their tree. If you have young children who would be blessed by opening a new door of faith each day, we have Advent calendars to share with them. Just call our office. Our current janitorial provider is offering on-the-job training for cleaning and disinfecting services while demand for meeting health and safety guidelines is high. If you know someone looking for work who would like to receive this training, please contact Jerlene Kwan. Thank you to Mark Hanslick, who met with technicians early this week to better prepare our sanctuary system for recording and live streaming. Thank you also to Mary Lou Hanslick, who prepared and photographed our Advent Sanctuary and our collection of nativity sets. I hope you enjoy seeing them through the season. Thank you to Reverend Motoi Yamada Fur and the music staff of Sacramento Japanese United Methodist Church, who are collaborating with us on music worship video resources this Advent season. I know we will all be blessed by our sharing. Let's share the peace of the Prince of Peace with one another. Thanksgiving greetings from the Hanslicks. Some of you may have not seen us in a while. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let's respond together and also with you.
Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your light shining before us, lighting our path and leading the way. Even in the midst of fear, challenge, and struggle, even when our vision is obscured by clouds of doubt, ignite the flame of hope within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Now, light your first Advent candle of hope at home. Then we'll sing one stanza of I Believe in the Sun. Is there anything we could long for more than a vaccine? Yes, the promised presence of God among us. Our song of gathering is Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Last week, the prophet Jeremiah spoke for God. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. Let's seek the God who welcomes us. I hope everyone found love to be grateful for this Thanksgiving. Let us pray that holiday gatherings will spread only a deeper commitment to keep everyone's loved ones safe. In gratitude to God who has kept us safe thus far. Lord, hear our prayer. Now that it has begun, let's pray for a transition of presidential powers for the United States that will reassure both our nation and those who hunger for democracy that we can overcome division. Lord, hear our prayer. Our conference prayer challenge for children invites us to pray this week for those children who suffer homelessness and hunger in this pandemic. It is heartbreaking to know so many more have fallen into this sad state this year. Let's pray for the wisdom to listen and learn how we might bring respite to their lives and help families out of homelessness in our community. Lord, hear our prayer. This week, Purdue Pharma, pleaded guilty to its role in the addiction of 10 million people 
and the deaths of 70,000 people from opioid overdose. Let's pray for a new accountability that will not seek profits at the expense of public health. Surely God's will is for medical research to relieve human pain and suffering, not make it greater. Lord, hear our prayer. This has been a hard year for young people. The violence at Arden Mall Friday was a sign of lost and confused hearts. Let's pray for all of the young people involved in the fighting, the gunfire, and the loss of a precious life. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's give thanks that Rick Schlosser and our virtual choir members are offering their time and gifts to bring us all closer to home together in our worship video. Bless you all. Each week, in preparation for prayer together, you are invited to join in or simply listen to this beautiful sung prayer to open our hearts to God's presence. Meet me in the stillness, Lord. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy One, we come to you, having left tables of gratitude all over the land, at least in our hearts, if not in miles. Grant us the comfort of your spirit to those whose hearts still ache from loved ones lost and missed. Comfort us with knowing that in your eternal love, we are never far from one another. Your presence unites us across all of time and space. We rejoice in the many ways you have sustained us with love, patience, and forgiveness. Our cornucopia of blessings overflows. Teach us to offer these blessings to all your children. Today we begin our journey again with the story of Jesus. Make us alert to every opportunity we have in this time of distancing to follow him more closely and to walk more closely with one another. Let this be a time of deeper bonding between us and not a time to drift away from you or one another. 
help each of us to find that quiet center where our spirits can be revived by yours. For we know that even while this exile continues, you call us to make your love and will known far beyond our own homes and families. Grant us the courage to step beyond our isolation, to discover the new thing you have already begun for us to join. Remind us to hold one another in hope that you will come to us in power as you promise. To the lost and confused in heart, help them know you and your purpose. To those who suffer illness, grant your healing love. For those who grieve, grant your comfort. To those who, feel, who fear loss of work, home, and health in the months ahead, let us be those who act for deliverance in their lives. Help each of us keep our own little lights shining, because together they become beacons of hope for your children who despair. All this we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord, Jesu, Sisu, Jesus. Amen. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Abba, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Three different prophets wrote under the name Isaiah. In this passage, 2nd Isaiah comforts God's exiled people with a heads-up notice that God is on the way. Follow along with your own Bible version, if you like. Our liturgist today is Carolyn Rocky. The Hebrew scripture reading today is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 8 in the New Revised Standard Version. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our nation has a continental divide, and I'm not talking geography. What is it like to live in a swing state now, when every other person you meet, every other bumper sticker in the lot, every other house on the block is a perceived opponent? Our political divide is passionate and deep. Still. Red versus blue oversimplifies fundamental divisions highlighted by this election and this pandemic we suffer together. Here are some divisions. White supremacists and people of color, educated elites and the underprivileged, urban and rural populations. 
those breaking ground in cutting edge technologies and those losing their jobs to those breakthroughs. The computer literate and those without access to the internet that influences the whole of their lives. Can we ever hope to bridge these divides? Second Isaiah was called by God to speak to a divided people. Elite, educated city dwellers of Samaria and Jerusalem ignored the needs of the people who worked their land. They schemed to secure their own political future by making deals with the wrong nations. The result of their neglect and self-serving politics was to be carted off as prisoners of war to Babylon and then Persia. Seventy years later, they were no longer the same people who had left. The country people left behind were not the same either. To survive occupation, they had mixed with other Canaanite tribes. Some even worshipped their gods. The people of God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah were lost in the wilderness of division. What hope did they have of returning to Palestine and becoming one nation again? Isaiah speaks for God. Comfort ye, my people. The prophet says there is every hope in one thing alone. God's faithfulness to the covenant made with Abraham and Sarah. God would always be their God. God would not abandon the wayward people. God would fulfill God's promises in and through their lives across decades, centuries, and kingdoms. God's mighty hand would release the captives, guide them home, and begin the work of rebuilding the nation and a new temple. But before all that, the people had hard work to do. Valleys would have to be leveled. Crooked paths would have to be made straight. Rocky, rough terrain would have to be smoothed out for God to cross over the great divide of unfaithfulness and sinfulness that had separated them in the first place. They called it a crossover event. Who could imagine the Pope meeting with NBA players on common ground? That ground is the deeply rutted territory of racial injustice. They met to share their commitment to redeem the uneven playing fields of our lives. That meeting gave hope to many hearts. Hope is found when we choose to cross the boundary of our side to work together to level playing fields for everyone, and to humanize rough places to benefit all. Our national divide has deep roots in racial injustice. On a cold Christmas morning in 1863, when it seemed our civil war would never end and the nation would literally break apart, hope was heard by a poet in the ringing of bells. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was a professor at Harvard University. He was also a deeply depressed man. The national scene was grim, but Henry was also grieving the tragic loss of his wife, Fanny. She was burned to death when her dress caught fire while sealing letters with paraffin two years earlier. Henry tried to save her and was severely burned on his face and arms. Fanny was buried three days later on their 18th wedding anniversary while Henry fought for his life. His grief was unbearable. On Christmas Day in 1862, he wrote how 
inexpressibly sad are all the holidays. A Merry Christmas, say the children, but that is no more for me. 157 years ago today, his son Charles, fighting in the Battle of Mine Run, Virginia, was shot through the back. Longfellow went to Washington to find him. They returned to Boston on December 8th. Henry began to nurse his son from the edge of death. The wars within and without Longfellow overwhelmed him. On Christmas morning, 1863, he began to write a bitter poem. It was as though an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But as he wrote, the bells of Christmas morning began to peal across the city. He stopped and listened. Then he began to write again. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. The crossover event of Emmanuel, God with us, had rung in his heart again. His faith and hope were renewed. He saw clearly again the hope that is Christmas. Through music, Longfellow's poem still brings hope to despairing hearts. Watch this film trailer to see the power of music to defy evil and despair. I went downstairs and there was a man sitting and he just said, I want to know, do all of you like to sing? If people are robbed of freedom, they want to be creative, and they were. Where this music is powerful, it represents a threat. And it was a tremendous challenge to have the Germans right there in front of us and tell them to their face. <laughs> It was something which made us strong. It has given us a resistance against our fate. Doing a performance was not entertainment. It was a fight for life. This world is requiem. Put all of us into another world. This was not the world with the Nazis. This was our world. These were hours of pure joy, as much as you can call joy in, in camp. Here they were, surrounded by man's worst, and these Jewish prisoners were determined to remind everyone of man's best. And I brought the Verdi here because I want to assure these people that we've heard them.
I don't think the soul has to be nourished by anything but by heavenly music. The, the soul doesn't need anything else. God has already given us the greatest gift we could ever receive in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We thank you, our God, for the great gift of Christ. And as we wait again for his humble birth, remind us of all that you have given to us that we are called to share with one another and with your world. Bless all of the gifts that have been received in our pledge campaign and help us to keep our commitment to you and one another strong. This we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Through the weeks of Advent, we'll be using a well-known chorus, two new words. You know it as, give thanks with a grateful heart. We will be singing, believe with a hopeful heart. heart. Believe and shine your light. Believe because the song we sing is sung for all. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what our God has
Music has always been used as a tool of resistance against evil, injustice, grief, sorrow. Today, our carol of resistance is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's stunning poem, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. People of God, we are the people who have hope because we know that our God keeps promises. Open your hearts to hope and share it with one another and with God's world. Amen.